So we're in a new setting, but the task is exactly the same. Our real world VBA example task part 10. Let's get into it. Now, had some excellent comments on the previous video. We've got Boulevard Min SS with a comment, also Paul with a comment. And they're both along the same lines because what we did in the previous video has actually created a few problems. The macro we created reasonably is no longer running smoothly. So well done to Paul and Boulevard Min SS for those comments. I read all the comments, definitely leave one. I'll get back to you. So with that said, let's get into the file and let's see what some of the problems are. So you'll notice if you try to run this routine now, I won't do it now, but if you try to run it, then you're probably going to get an error. And where are these errors coming from? Well, we've got a couple of issues. In fact, I've identified three issues. First, you might notice that this is running quite slowly and inefficiently. And that's because of these indirect formulae. So I've just moved on to the use indirect sheet. We've got our indirect formulae here. These are no longer working because we changed the sheet names, of course. So we've got to change these references at the top. Remember, the indirect formulae is looking at the values in the cells to understand which sheet to go to. So we've got to change these names to the sheet names. And you'll remember last time we just shortened the sheet names. So for example, AZ customers became just AZ. So you can go through the file, shorten those sheet names. That should clear up the problem with the indirect formula and hopefully give us a smoother execution. But there's other issues too. Let's go back to the VBA editor. Now, this uh, routine, we've spoken about dynamic quality through the series. We've tried to retain dynamic quality, which means that if new sheets are added, this code, code should still work. But gradually, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to stick to this principle all the way, but we'll see how we go. Now, we've had a problem because we've added new sheets to the file. We've added new sheets to the file. So this line of code with active uh, active workbook.sheets.counts, uh, well, the number of sheets has changed, so that's no longer accurate. So how can we make it accurate? Let's think logically about it. Well, we've added one, two, three, four sheets. We can see down at the bottom, we've added these 1L, 2L to 4L sheets down at the bottom there. So we've added four sheets. So what does that actually mean uh, logically? I'm just going to go back to the analysis sheet here. What does that mean logically? Well, this number that was two, we're going to have to add four onto that number because we've got four new sheets. So I'm going to take this up to six. And this should mean that the total offset variable, the value in there is accurate. Remember, the total offset variable is controlling the position control to get us over to this total column. So we just made a tweet there. Logically, it seems all right. We'll see in a second if it actually works. So that's two of our issues dealt with. So thirdly, we don't want the new sheets we created, the 1L, 2L, 3L sheets. We don't want those sheets to be included in this part of the analysis. Remember, in this part of the analysis, we're taking the names from a particular sheet putting them all on one sheet and doing this big collation that Eric wanted. Remember Eric's briefing originally, that's what we're working to. So we need a mechanism to exclude, a mechanism to exclude certain sheets. Now, there's various ways to do this, but a straightforward way, and I think an effective way, is just to put some text on each of these list sheets. So I'm going to say literally list sheets. I'm on the 1L sheet, moving across to the 2L sheet, Moving across to the uh, 3L sheets here, just uh, pasting in Control V on the Windows PC. Moving across to the 4L uh, to the 4L sheet and Control V. And this one I'm just going to type in seems to have lost uh, what was on the clipboard there. Okay. Now you'll notice I put those values in the same cell on each sheet. That's going to be important in a second when we come to the programming. So B3. B3, 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 just going back through the sheets, this seems to be reasonable. So back to the VBA editor now. We've got a piece of information on each of the list sheets. It's consistent across each of the, each of the list sheets. So we can now say to VBA, conceptual thinking, we can now say to VBA, if the value in B3 is list sheets, then ignore this sheet. So you might want to stop the video. How are you going to do that? 
I'm going to do it with a conditional statement here. And we're going to say if uh, sheets counter dot name. So I'm using the existing infrastructure, if you like, the existing coding I'm using. And we're going to make it work for us. If sheets counter uh, dot uh, range, rather, um, we're going to say range B3. B3, of course, is the cell where we've just inputted list sheets. Uh, then we can say dot value, although that's not absolutely necessary. It's the default property equals. And then what did we write in? We wrote in list sheet there. And then, in fact, let's say does not equal this sheet. So we've said to the VB editor, if the value in cell B3 does not equal list sheets, then we want you to do all of this code. Now, we've got to be careful when we open a conditional statement, what are we got to do? We've got to make sure we close it at the same time. So just under this end width, and my annotations are helping me here, just under this end width, I'm going to say end if, and I'm going to put an, an annotation here, end if not a list sheet, lovely. And all of this code, I'm going to indent. So again, I've got to be precise here. Just going to tab across there. And then let's say if not list sheet here. And there we go. I've got a conditional statement there. Just a quick check through here. Just looking at the structure, the indentation, the annotations, all of these things that we've been diligently maintaining through the series, they're helping us now. They're helping us now. You know, we're getting to the business end of, the, of this task and things are getting more complicated. So we made three fixes there, had to fix the indirect formula, had to fix uh, this value here, which works off the number of sheets. And we've got a conditional statement in which should exclude the list sheet. So control S, save the file, hit the F5 key. And then let's see what happens. And as you can see, the routine seems to have run with a good level of efficiency there. And I'm just going to clear out this data, although the code does that, of course. But I'm just going to clear it out just to convince myself that this is working. Clear the data off the analysis sheet. Back to the routine. Hit the F5 key. OK, and we've got our information going in there. Not super efficient, but reasonably efficient, efficient enough. And, you know, I'm doing a screen recording as well, which is slowing things down uh, a little bit. So uh, is this information the same as the on the use indirect sheets? And we can check through there. So where's Luna Haminja? Just going down here, get her into your screenshot. And we've got 1001 for Luna Haminja there. OK, and you can continue to do a few more checks there. So. That's as far as we're going in this video. You're saying to me, Chris, we haven't done anything. No exciting coding, no loops, only one conditional statement. And I'll say to you, that's what it's like. It's the real world example task series. This is what it's like, the rhythm of Excel VBA coding. We're not coding all the time. A lot of the time we're conceptualizing and planning or we're doing some tidying up, which is exactly what we've done in this video. It's an essential part of the coding process. I want to share that with you. If you can work on these meta skills, your coding's going to improve. I'll see you in the next video.